I got to make my very own planetarium experience. And I wanna bring you along and show you how I did it. I went to the Sudicum Planetarium in Nashville, Tennessee, where the show was gonna take place. And to make this show happen, I'm using a combination of space photos, time lapses, and artwork my wife and I have created throughout our careers to make an epic show. And to take this show to the next level, we're gonna have live music during the event. But there's only one problem. Normally, a show like this would take six to nine months to produce. You plan the event, the length and the music that'll be played. You storyboard the visuals so they match the vibe and the feel of the music. Then you set up, capture and create the content that will be used in the show, which can take weeks to months. Then you arrange everything as a video, convert it to fit the dome, go back and forth with the planetarium to see how it all works, make adjustments, render the show, rehearse with the musicians, and then it's ready to go. But for us, we had less than one month to make this happen. So you're probably asking yourself, why are we doing this planetarium show in the first place? One of the poorest regions in the United States is Appalachia, a geographic region near the Appalachian Mountains. The economic struggles and poverty is unmistakable and well-documented, but they do have something that major cities don't, incredible views of the night sky. While these folks have the best view of the stars, they lack the tools to see them. These places are far away from city lights that block the night sky, but because they're in poorer regions, they can't afford the equipment needed to explore it. That's why we wanted to raise money and donate telescopes to underserved schools in the region so kids can explore the night sky. Astronomy is something that can change lives, and a telescope is a perfect tool to do that. And these telescopes that we'll be donating aren't your ordinary everyday telescopes. They're a brand new type of telescope called a smart telescope. When most people think of telescopes, they think of these long spyglass looking things that Galileo used. Ordinary telescopes are limited by size, light pollution, and our eyes. Even if you look through the biggest telescopes in the world, most of these deep space objects will look nothing more than a faint smudge to the untrained eye. These smart telescopes use built-in cameras, which will show you more detail than you would ever see with your eye. If you think of your eyes like a camera, your eyes refresh and collect image details every 1 60th of a second. The cameras in these new smart telescopes take 10 second images, giving you 60,000 times more detail than you'd see with your eye. And each photo it takes is stacked on the previous one, increasing the detail you'll see over time on these night sky objects. And learning the night sky, how to navigate it and locate these faint deep sky objects is a skill that takes years to perfect. And let's face it, school teachers are swamped with loads of work, lesson plans, grading, meetings. Most of them don't have the time or energy to learn these skills. That's why having these smart telescopes is an incredible tool. It makes astronomy education easier for the teachers and it brings a personalized hands-on experience for kids. Okay, let's get back to bringing this show to life. Now we wanted to have a big musical performance for this, like a live orchestra with like strings and horns and wind instruments and stuff like that, but because we had such a small amount of time to prepare for this event, we could not make that happen. But we did get some good news because we found out that world-renowned violinist Christina McGann said she would play for our planetarium show. And let me tell you, Christina is incredible. She's won multiple awards throughout her career and has performed all over the world. While we were happy to finally get started on putting the visuals together for this show, we ran into another problem. The music choices made the show 35 minutes long, and we initially thought that the show was gonna be 20 minutes at most. So we had to fill all of that additional time with more footage. Static photos and artwork can only be shown for a brief period of time, otherwise the show will get pretty boring and the night sky time lapses range anywhere from 10 seconds to a minute long or so, because there's a limited amount of time where you could capture them. This meant we didn't have enough footage to fill the entire 35 minute show and create something we would be proud of. So we did what any logical person would do. We hopped in our car and drove to the middle of nowhere in Texas. It's Texas. Texas? What's a Texas? Honestly, we went to central Texas because our telescope is there. So we travel there to capture more night sky time lapses and high resolution images of deep space so we could put them in the show. Once we got enough material for the show, it was time to bring it to life. To make this work, 
We used a variety of software to build and create all of these different pieces for the show. Uh, I'm using Photoshop to make this base object smaller so that, you know, it doesn't take up the entire dome. So we can see some of the cool bits of cosmos around it. We have a bunch of telescope data. So I'm using this program here called PixInsight, and it's used to calibrate and process the telescope data to bring to life all of these deep space images. This program I'm using right here is called LR Time Lapse. This lets me take all the static photos that make up the time lapse and combine them together to create a video. Once we had all of the videos and images completed, it was time to convert them so they could fit the planetarium dome. So I'm currently using Adobe After Effects and I use this to like add the warp to the images and to animate them. If you can imagine, this red circle is the dome. This is the center. This is the front of the dome and this is the back of the dome. Making all of this stuff was going slow. I mean, really slow. I'm running this off my laptop and it is so slow. But this is kind of what it will look like. Even pre-rendered, it is very slow. We quickly realized that our laptop's processing power was the limiting factor for us. It was slowing us down. So once again, we did what any sane, logical person would do. We built an entire brand new PC to speed things up. Look, we had the odds stacked against us the entire time, but we still somehow managed to get the show completed and ready for the premiere. And it went a little something like this. Thanks to this show, we were able to raise nearly $10,000 worth of telescope gear for these kids. These telescopes will change the lives for so many of these kids who might have never had the opportunity to get introduced to space. And we'll be putting up a full piece performance from this show, so you can enjoy it either on your phone or laptop, desktop, or through a VR headset. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.